Alright, I've got to make sure the distance between the rails is the same at the end so that it doesn't derail. Two two five. level all the way across now, that's what I want. Alright, there's a gearbox there for that horizontal blade. I'll check the wheel in there. Yep, that's looking good. Yep, that's got a wheel. Alright, 132 there, to the centre, and yeah, 132, so spot on there. Pretty much parallel with the rails now, get all that dirt off the bark there, um, and I also have to cut this piece of metal out of there. That was so hard to get out. It's got a, a chain wrapped around it, and it's the um, the trees growing over the chain. That's a mission. So that's going to cut into my uh, timber a little bit, but um, can't really avoid that. Doesn't hurt to check. You never know what can be lurking in these old logs. I'll make a light pass somewhere here just to see how level we are with the rails.
that looks pretty good to me. This is the, the edge, it came down to there, and you can see it sort of just skims along the top there, around about even all the way along, so I think I'll leave it at that. I mean, yeah, that end could probably do with coming up slightly, but it's not really worth mucking around too much. not really structurally great yet but I'll do, do some uh, two befores out of this so I'll take it down four inches here and um, yeah and then by then we should be into the good stuff I think pretty rubbishy tree really you know with all this bark in it but we'll get something out of it this gets clogged up so I'll just get the gives that a bit of a pull just to get that sawdust off there Try and keep the old debts and cool. Yeah, it's looking good in there. No oil leaks. No water leaks. Hydraulic oil isn't getting hot. At the, the hydraulics don't really work very hard on this thing. Like they've just got the the up and down motor and the side to side, which is only used at the end of the cut. The main um, hydraulic motor on this is the uh, to drive it along the track back and forth. You would have seen me feathering the, the speed with this variable valve. That slows the mill down or speeds it up as it goes along the track. So if it starts bogging down, I'll just wind that in until it picks up again and, uh, and then let it out. I'm sort of feathering that all the time. Stop and start the travel with that lever. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a bit of a balancing act really. Like I'll feather it with this and if I need more power, less power, that's the revs. I could put a governor on it so that it's uh, it automatically controls the revs, but you know, I'm sort of used to it nowadays and it's just easy enough just to tap that every now and then. I've gone down 10 inches here, so we'll get some decent tuba 10s out of there. I'll give it a good sharpen now because we're getting into some quite heavy cuts here.
All right, there's quite a bit of resin in the middle there. It's causing a lot of friction and uh, bogging down the mill, so I'll get that off. Twenty-four and a half centimeters, so that's just under ten inches deep. It's like nine, nine and three quarter inches deep, and yeah, like six, six centimeters, probably two and a half inches uh, wide. Some twelve by twos, twelve by ones, six by twos at the bottom there. Um, the top couple of layers is pretty much rubbish, but. Yeah, be useful for something. Everything from here down is pretty decent timber. So yeah, that was that was worth doing. The rest of that log is just a bit knotty to really bother with. Um, there's no no strength in it, so that can be all firewood. And got some nice sawdust for the garden. That can go around the strawberries. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.